Hi, everybody. You have run into part four of the review of this groundbreaking document that was released back in 2001 by a whistleblower. But I don't think anybody's ever looked at this thing cover to cover and especially didn't report on it. And here we are on the robotic intelligence section. Wayne, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so, Steve, what we're going to find out now, uh, this is the blueprint to what we have today, which we call quantum computing, the D-Wave computer, the computer that now outthinks mankind. Correct. And this is, again, Steve, it's, it's important that we do this, that people, because most people will not take the time to go through 114 slides. There it is, I'm going to do it. Pocket, yeah, especially kind of explaining some of these things, these terms, these acronyms that we've seen before, Wayne. Yeah, and let me tell you, folks, there's some terminology in here that I never heard of. Uh, so we're going back, we're going to go back through this, and we're going to learn what these terms mean because um, there's just some of this that, well, you'll see for yourself. So, Steve, let's talk about robotic intelligence. Well, there, this, we've been talking about robotics. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm looking back on everything that we have been doing for literally the last six months or this more. This is baking my jaw drop. I mean, this is, the, again, guys, let me remind you, this is a document from 2001, CIA, NSA, DARPA, all these agencies got together to discuss the future of warfare. Yeah, well, that's, that's what it is, the future of warfare. That's what we're talking about. Right. So let's continue, Wayne. I mean, this is just right. blowing me away. So in the beginning, the powers to be realized that AI was going to come, Steve. And in this document, again, uh, the date is July 2001. Apparently, we have two flavors of AI. We have traditional AI, uh, which is rule-based. I know the spirit of traditional <laughs> Traditional AI was super deployed in the mid 2000s uh, to the end of two th two, the first 10 years of the decade, okay? And that rule based, like I think of Pegasystems and some of the big commercial yeah. people, SA, SAS, uh, SPSS, all those guys, they already mastered rule based uh, AI. They, uh, Hulu, 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 or whatever it's called, is already deployed in all the five uh, or the four major credit card companies. Hadoop, Hadoop which is rule-based traditional AI. So this stuff's already deployed. Yeah, but the, what I found interesting, and that's just one flavor. Yeah. They don't like that flavor. What they want is, I think, flavor number two. This is, I think, the chocolate, which, uh, look at this. Experimental, behavior-based, neural nets, other soft computing. That's happening as we speak. It's being deployed in homes and businesses across the world. And then look at this other one. The combination of these is current best bet to produce artificial cyber life, which will possibly to probably be sentient. Although it will be not self-aware, I guess, Athamomoric, that's what they're saying. I guess that's a danger. So they inserted in this. Mm -hmm. and I think this was the evolution curve. And this is what <laughs> computer power has done to us, folks. And you're going to see what this document really is saying, that mankind is screwed. But <laughs> I, I didn't give it all away yet. No, no, don't, don't. No. <laughs> I refuse to accept the name. <laughs> and you keep on refusing. That's the spirit. <laughs> yeah, I have to be the good cop in this conversation. Yes. So <laughs> we, we want to go from robotic to autonomous, right? Yes. So let's look at here. The computer has the capability will exist beyond teraflop to do AI or better. Require connectivity is a given. Well, you know, if you are building an artificial life form and you're going to tell it that it's going to have to be hooked up to the net, the first thing I think that life form would figure out is that, well, I need to control the net because <laughs> if someone else is controlling the net, that means they control me. Right. You got to control the net. 
Yeah. So we have, uh, here's the competitors. Uh, they talk about, you know, the inadequacies of human interactions, education, conscious decision, and timelines. How many movies have we seen where back in the uh, Cold War where the guy is sitting down in the d missile silo, right? And he's got that moment where the order has been given. Well, that's what they're talking about here. Machine wouldn't think twice. Um, little to no troops. There you go. Flat hierarchy. Well, you don't have to worry about the chain of command anymore. And look at here. You've got a high level soft science that has the human aspects already. And look what it contains. Isn't that the sum total of what you would say that the human experience is? Would I? Yeah, I mean, you got basically your social, you got your political, you got the environment, you know, you got to have religion, and you got the psychological, you got the economics. You see what I'm saying? I do. So they have figured out that, well, let's put this in AI. And look at this, non-explosive warfare. Boy, isn't this very much fun? I mean, anti-functionals, microwave, chemical, bio, micro-mechanical. Right, nano-mechanical, anti-personnel. What? Microwave, radio frequency, micro-mechanical. Okay, and how about this? I mean, I guess if you're going to have warfare, you might as well be green about it, right? No, back in the 60s, they were experimenting with trying to manipulate dolphins to do naval missions. I don't know how successful they were in that, but I mean, that, I mean, 2017, what does it look like? This is what it looks like. Utilizing animals, i.e. urban rats. Now listen, you don't put words in there, folks, unless you have some sort of case study. Insects as delivery systems, munitions, feeding, swarming, biting, poisoning. Let me just tell you a little story about how this works. So have a friend, went to a certain part of California. Um, it was actually in May, and I won't give the place away, but as he and his family went there, uh, was visiting other family. They were sitting out in the evening and enjoying what has, was typical a very wonderful California evening. The next thing they know, the kids start screaming. And they all of a sudden, he said, it was as if he said, Wayne, it was almost as if someone was sticking us with a stinging dart. And he said, we could see the whelps, but you couldn't see anything. Now, apparently, that whole area got swarmed with what they said on the local news were gnats, which are virtually, you can't see them. But they apparently deliver quite the bite. That's what immediately what I think about when I read that. See, anecdotes, I mean... I'm sure more anecdotes are gonna come in as we expose this information. Yes, so characteristics, future, emerging sensors. I mean, look at this, Steve. Inexpensive, numerous to hoard, clouds, swarms. I told you earlier, we told everyone, watch that word swarms. Uh, small, light, ubiquitous, ready and available. Um, all of this, both explosive and non-explosive. Smart to brilliant. This sounds like a Terminator episode. Doesn't it though? Potential future orders of magnitude. How about you address this one? This is right up in your alley. Sure, man. I mean, orders of magnitude increases in overall weapons effectiveness. Availability at orders of, it's called basically increasing the orders of magnitude through nanocomputing, for example. So biochemological molecular nanocomputing. So basically this is a, this, they're saying that this would be a force multiplier ubiquitous optical communications, micro <laughs> nano ubiquitous sensors. That means that you can deploy sensors. Ubiquitous means everywhere. So basically they, I believe this is a huge part of what the chemtrailing is quite frankly, Wayne. Uh, Wayne. It sounds it, doesn't it? Doesn't yeah, it? It does. And bioweaponry, who knows, right? Yeah. Cooperative swarms of cheap, small weapons and sensors. I mean, this again, recurring theme in this document 
is the idea of swarming small, tiny, micro and nano technology, the volumetric weaponry. In other words, they can actually like take a whole area and then volumetrically deal with it with one weapon system or another. Uh, cyber artificial life. Oh my God, here we are beyond AI. And that's what we've been actually been focused on lately. We're at, we're on bullet point number, whatever. Yeah. These things are in place. 2017. And then it continues on. I mean, yeah. I'll let you, you continue. Oh, oh man. This it's is typical warfare, which means warfare that's not like your typical approach, your typical approach to. So basically they're talking about these are the asymmetric the asymmetries in our, in our, anti-US that could really hurt us, right? Vulnerability of our logistics chain, which also happened to the English uh, British Empire um, up until when we took over that status. Long, undefendable coastline, that's us. Sensitivity to casualties. Hey, the American people don't like any casualties of America. No, they do not. No, they do not. They don't. And it's, it's I'm sorry my work to my international global audience, it's just the way Americans are. They just, they, we just have this thing and we have no tolerance for American, American, uh, American uh, death. Vulnerabilities to terrorism, you know, and then increase in IT and biological, and then increasing over-reliance upon vulnerable overhead assets. All of this, Steve, is happening right now. Yeah. Now, here we go. Surface ship and aircraft are, are non-LO and undefended. So here are on-route logistics vulnerabilities continue. Um, Again, it just goes through all the different vulnerabilities we have. I don't care to you know get into detail with any of this stuff. Let's just move through. Now, here's the fundamental with our projection. Look at this. Enemy aggressor nations can have country-sized magazines filled with hordes of inexpensive precision strike munitions, area denial. U.S. forces run out of bullets and die. <laughs> get this one. <laughs> Deep water subs with large loadout swimming weaponry only survivable close in platform. How about the beam weapons? <laughs> uh, I thought that those were theoretical. I know, right? Yeah. And look this at this is, one. Yeah, this is all our dif different, you know, problems with our, our current triad of our nuclear system. Can move through this real quick. <laughs> so this is basically saying we're where we're vulnerable, correct? Yeah, that's what I thought. So here's the potential workarounds. <laughs> for beam weapon effects on missile sensors and comms. What? I really am, I wanna know how far the laser technology has gone now. No, see this awkward sensor concept where they're saying network everywhere on everything where we have this nanotechnology that works as a basically a huge sensing system and can basically biologically mechanically be changed on the spot, even using it to eat things. Come on, dude. Look at this one, Steve. Optical fluidic computing. How about that one? Neat. I'm telling you. And then here we're getting in, um, again, this is, it, folks, it just goes to show you where we're very, very vulnerable. Um, blast wave accelerators, transoceanic. Wait, 2001, this would have been before 9-11. Yes, sir. Hmm. Um, Binary bio intro into the food supplies. Well, that's happening now. Right. Inexpensive Trojan horse civilian systems. Where are we with this whole Russian hacking? We show it constantly where World War III is taking place. Correct. I mean, that's that goes without saying. We're, this is a world at war right now. How about this one? Unconventional new delivery. Sink a ship offshore, detonate it to produce a tidal wave with radioactive spume. What, what's a spume? I know, right? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, how about this one? Balloons with GPS sport shoots. Now, when I read this one, um, not a lot of people know about the Roman Legion, but when the Roman Legion foot soldier would go into battle, what they had on their shield was on the inside, they had these things called darts. And typically each shield would hold about seven to nine of them. 
Well, you didn't want to get hit in the head or particularly in the face with one of these darts, and these soldiers were really good. They could throw that before they deployed their, um, their swords. So when I hear this, Steve, I'm getting this idea of a balloon floating over, and the next thing I know, it explodes, and it's got all these freaking little shoots coming down on top of you. And how about Trojan horse everything? <laughs> yeah, planes, cars, trucks, packages, cargoes. Now, conspiracy theorists have been talking, quote unquote, conspiracy theorists. In fact, I mean, they're actually fact <laughs> reporters, as we can you know, see. I've been about this stuff. Yeah, and here it is. Yeah. I mean, the planners have been planning about it. Uh, listen, they get into the banking system. The railroads, they get into specifics of how the railroads could be attacked, how the banking system, the financial system, how you could take down the auto industry, the power grid, chicken farms. We don't think about these things. And, you know, if you begin to cut off the suit, the food supply in which you think is a very, you know, innocuous thing, like a chicken farm, right? Mm -hmm. You could begin to have a cascading effect. How about this one? The, Revo the revolutionary size, capability, cost of war fighting spirals. I mean, if you're going to have a war, you got to pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is how they're going to approach this thing on how they can reduce the cost. And this is where we're in part four. Part five will wrap this thing up. But folks, you want to stay tuned into part five. Absolutely right. And thanks for joining the Steiger Olson Report, GNM. Appreciate you joining us. Be kind to one another.